What's up guys, my name is Vladimir and welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know, I grew up in Ukraine and I'm fluent in both Ukrainian and Russian language. Someone recently in the comment section recommended me to check out Lang Focus channel. I think I saw his take on Russian language. The video was incredible. I haven't seen his comparison of Russian and Ukrainian language. And since I know both languages, I thought it would be interesting for you to find out my opinion. And guys, for those who don't know me, I'm not a professional. On this channel, I love talking about Eastern European culture because I grew up there. My friends from Ukraine could have a little bit different opinion about our culture. But this guy, this guy is legit. His channel is what I wish my channel was. And also this video is 17 minutes long, so I'm probably gonna cut some things out. So if you wanna check out the whole video, go on his channel, click the like button under his video and subscribe to his channel. This dude is amazing. Guys, if, you, if you're interested in languages and accents, this is the channel. This is the channel. And also guys, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I do something like this every day and let's grow together. And yeah. Let's just begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name welcome. is Paul. Today we're going to look at the differences between two languages that many people mistakenly think are the same, Russian, Russian and, and Ukrainian. Ukrainian. The misconception that Russian and Ukrainian are the same might stem from the fact that Russian is widely spoken in Ukraine. The numbers differ That's depending true. on the survey, but according to one 2015 survey, 60% of Ukrainians consider Ukrainian their native language. 15% consider Russian to be their native language and 22% consider both to be mm. their native languages. I think I mentioned this in the previous video. Before I came to Canada, I considered Ukrainian my native language. But once someone asked me what language I speak with my parents and I said Russian, now I say my native language is Russian. But I think it's both. So that's that's pretty accurate. Most of the Eastern Ukraine territory, these ones, we speak the Russian language primarily. That's why 15% consider Russian to be their native language. It's also worth noting that most Ukrainian speakers can also speak Russian, even if it's as a second language. Yeah, this is correct because Ukraine was a part of USSR and official language of USSR was Russian. So I assume because of that, most of the Ukrainians can speak Russian. Some people may hear Ukrainians speaking Russian and think to themselves, wow, Ukrainian is so similar to Russian. But what they should say to themselves is, wow, Russian is so similar to Russian. On top of that, some people use a mixture of Ukrainian and Russian called Surzhik. What? How does he know that? And they may not be consciously aware of which elements are Ukrainian and which are Russian. This yeah, Surzhik, oh my God. If anyone from Ukraine watches me, I don't hate Surzhik. But can you speak either Ukrainian or Russian, please? <laughs> However, despite the sometimes unclear delineation between the two languages, standard Russian and standard Ukrainian are clearly distinct. And the vernacular speech of most that's true, that's true. people is also clearly distinct. There was a old Slavic language. Both of those languages came from old Slavic language. Both languages developed from the old East Slavic language. <laughs> That's what I said. Which comprised a set of mutually intelligible dialects spoken within the Federation of Rus, which later came to be referred Kievan to Rus. as Kievan Rus. Kievan Rus, These yes. Old East Slavic speakers are thought... We learned in school that Kievan Rus was one of the most powerful countries in the whole world at the time. But when Golden Army, or I don't know how it's called in English, Mongolia Tatars came to Europe, they destroyed the whole Kievan Rus. And it collapsed in few parts. And those provinces became Russia, Ukraine, and other countries. Thought of as the ancestors of today's Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians. When Kievan Rus fell, the Slavic tribes were divided into two How separate did... states, and the Old East Slavic dialects in those separate states began to grow apart from each other and undergo different influences. Tribes to the east came under the rule of the Grand Duchy of Moscow, and their dialects evolved into Russian. Standard Russian, which is dominant today, developed with more influence from Old Church Slavonic, the Old Slavic literary language, which differed from vernacular dialects. Also, under Peter the Great, who aimed to turn Russia into a major Western power, Russian adopted a significant amount of vocabulary from French and other European languages. I think it's also true for some of the Ukrainian words. I know that a lot of Russian words are borrowed, and in Ukraine we also have borrowed words. But like English is basically like half of English also came from French. Standard Ukrainian was based on spoken vernacular, specifically the southeastern dialects, and lacks much of the old church Slavonic influence that Russian has. 
Ukrainian also underwent a lot of Polish influence due to yes. geographic proximity and Polish political control, yes. with Polish being a lingua franca for a period of time. This is especially true in Western Ukrainian dialects. A lot of people on the West, they influenced by Poland, Hungary, I think even Romania. And also in East, we influenced by Russia. So that's the thing. Let's cut to the chase and start looking at the languages themselves. Vocabulary. Russian and Ukrainian share about 62% lexical similarity. 62. I personally one. found this number okay. surprisingly low. You really? Huh. Yeah, I, I get. No, it sounds about right, 62%. Yeah. Ukrainian has a higher lexical similarity with Polish, Slovak, and Belarusian than it does with Russian. Oh, interesting. Belarusian, 84%? Whew. When I go home from Canada to Ukraine, I fly Polish airlines, and when they speak Polish, I can understand the context, and some words they sound a little bit different, but I can understand what they mean. But that's, that's very interesting. Belarusian, 84%, that's nuts. Even among very basic words, there are lots of differences. The word for paper in Ukrainian, papir, and in Russian, bumaga. bumaga. I suspect the Ukrainian word was borrowed from Polish, which in turn borrowed it from German. Hmm. The word for sugar, cukor, cukor. Sachar. Sachar. Both of these yes. words are cognates that trace back to Proto-Indo-European. The Russian word traces back to Old East Slavic, while the Ukrainian word was borrowed from Polish, which borrowed it from German. Oh, it's very funny. I knew some Ukrainians, they didn't think that Russia is a Slavic language, but here we see that some words of Ukrainian language borrowed from German language and not from Slavic. Cukor. Also, the names of months are different. In Russian, the names of months came from Latin via Old Church Slavonic. In Ukrainian, the names of the months are original vernacular Slavic words. For example, January. In Russian, Yanvari. A lot of Russian months names, they're very similar to English names. For example, January, Yanvar, February, Fevral, Mart, March, April, April, and so on. Whereas in Ukrainian language, it's uh, September, Verasen. February, Luty. So yeah, it's different. It's different. And in Months. Ukrainian, Sichin. Sichin, yes, yes. And February, Fevral, Luty. Yes. And so on. Yes. As with most languages which are closely related, there are lots of false friends in Russian and Ukrainian. Words that appear to have the same meaning but actually don't. Chas. This Ukrainian word means time. Chas. This Russian word means hour. Yes. Arbus. Yes. yes. This means pumpkin. Arbus. And this means watermelon. Yes. Svit. This word means world. Svet. This means light. This Russian word does have a secondary meaning of world, but only in some fixed expressions. Orthography and pronunciation. Both languages use varieties of the Cyrillic mm. alphabet. Yes. But there are a number of differences between the Russian variety and the Ukrainian variety. A little bit. First, Ukrainian has this letter, yes. which represents the sound g, but yes. Russian doesn't have this letter. In Russian, yes. G is represented by this letter. In Ukrainian, this letter is normally pronounced as uh -huh. At some point in my life, I didn't know that a Russian language didn't have... I just didn't realize that a Russian language doesn't have a sound H or H or HA and it has only G. And sometimes when Ukrainians speak Russian language and if we say, for example, instead of GAVARIT, some of Ukrainian people can say HAVARIT which is very, very thick Ukrainian accent spoken in Russian. Does that make sense? And when I found out that, I tried to say only говорит and letter G, not H. Ukrainian has this letter, which represents e. the sound E, but yes. Russian doesn't have this letter. In Russian, this letter uh, yeah, represents the sound E. Yes. Ukrainian has this letter, which represents the sound Y. Yeah. In Russian, this letter represents the similar sound Y. But in Ukrainian, this letter represents the sound E. Eh. Yeah. And in Russian, that sound E eh is represented by this letter. It's a little bit confusing. Since these languages, both of my native languages, I kind of, I know the difference. It would be hard for me to teach you because I kind of know that, you know? A letter which isn't used in Ukrainian. Russian has this letter, which represents the sound E. E. A letter which Ukrainian doesn't have. Instead, in Ukrainian, this letter represents the equivalent sound, in e. addition to the sound i. For example, the words meaning soap. In Russian, myla. And in Ukrainian, myla. 
Ukrainian has this letter to represent the sound yi, but Russian doesn't have this letter. In Russian, this sound is represented by a combination of two letters. True. Russian has this letter to represent the sound yo, but Ukrainian doesn't yo. use this letter. Instead, a Russian language has a letter yo. <laughs> and it uses a combination of two letters. Grammar. The concepts of grammar in Russian and Ukrainian are generally the same. They both have three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. Yes, they both have neuter. neuter? We have he, she, it, right? Almost the same set of noun cases that apply to adjectives and pronouns as well. They share the same major verb conjugations and so on. But the exact word forms are often different, or at least not entirely the same. Let's look at the different case forms for the noun meaning head in both languages. These words are cognates. In Russian, голова. And in Ukrainian, голова. These are both in the nominative singular form. Notice that in the nominative singular, they are spelled exactly the same, but sound fairly different. The first consonant is one that I mentioned before, which normally sounds like g in Russian, but g uh -huh. in Ukrainian. In Russian, the O vowel is frequently reduced to a uh -huh. or schwa when unstressed, yes. while in Ukrainian, it tends to not be reduced. Yes, so in the Russian language, the letter O, it's pronounced a when it's not stressed. For example, in the word malako, even though there are three O letters, it's pronounced ma la ko and ko because they stress on the last syllable. Now, looking at the case forms, and it's not the case in Ukrainian language. In Ukrainian language, it's basically moloko, o o o. One thing to notice is that the case endings have some different vowels. Some are different letters representing equivalent sounds. For example, the Russian genitive singular, голови and the Ukrainian genitive singular. Голови. Others represent different sounds. For example, the Russian dative singular Голове. and the Ukrainian dative singular. Голові. Another thing to notice is that while Ukrainian has a vocative case, Russian does not. The vocative form is the form you use when you are addressing or calling someone or something. And also guys, this is the hardest thing I think to learn for foreigners in Russian or Ukrainian language. I even can't explain what the f is this. I hated this in school. I kind of know it on intuitive level because I kind of know what it is, but I can't explain. Depends on the situation. We can change words, the endings of the words for the most part. Like if we say a head, it's galava. But if we say, for example, in a context, I'm giving this to a head, uh, we would say я даю это голове. So you see, the ending is changes. Голова, голове, головой, голову, голову, голове, головой. You see what I mean? The ending is changes all the time. And when I hear some of the English-speaking people talking in Russian, and I notice these mistakes, and when they don't do these mistakes when they say properly. That's where I know that there are very good speakers. Another common difference is that in Russian, the copula, быть, the word meaning to be, is not used in the present tense. This is often true in Ukrainian too, which has a lot of dialectal variation. But in formal standard speech, and in Western dialects closer to Poland, the copula is commonly used. Yeah, also guys, I think that Ukrainian language has a lot of dialects, whereas Russian doesn't, I think think or at least not that much because ukraine became independent only in 1991 and before that it was part of ussr for a long time and before that the part of west was a part of poland part of east was a part of russia the south was turkish or something i don't know i don't remember the history so because our country was torn for a long, long, long time, and it still is, unfortunately, in some cases. Our Ukrainian language is very different from East to West. For example, let's look at the sentence's meaning, this is illegal. In Russian, это незаконно. Это незаконно. In Ukrainian, it could be similar, це це незаконно. or it might have the copula like this. Це є незаконно. In Western Ukraine, it might be like this. То є незаконно. Oh, yeah. То є is similar to to jest in Polish. Yeah. Like for me, it sounds a little bit weird. To je nezakonno. Це je nezakonno. This is, in my opinion, this is proper. But to je nezakonno, it's like informal. Or like slang. To je nezakonno. 
It doesn't sound like very proper to me. And it's funny that in English, for the most part, there is a proper grammar when you have a proper structure, right? Like your subject, your object and verb and noun or whatever. And it should be in proper structure, right? But in Russian and Ukrainian language, we can change position of words and it might change the meaning or might not change the meaning. Figure that out. Another difference is that Russian, at least formal Russian, makes use of active participles to give extra information about a noun or a noun phrase, while Ukrainian does not. For example, the phrases meaning the woman sitting on the chair. First in Russian. This phrase has an active participle, but in Ukrainian, this meaning would be expressed using a relative clause. Oh my god, <laughs> it's like I'm going back to school. Oh. We were studying Ukrainian language and a little bit of Russian language in school, like you studying English language. It just brings me back. Oh my god, like 20 years back. This is like saying the woman that sits on the chair. Yeah. That's also how this meaning would be expressed in daily speech in Russian. Женщина, которая сидит на стуле. In the Russian sentence, the relative pronoun is которая. But in Ukrainian, there are several possibilities. Котрий which is cognate with the Russian word який or що as in the sentence above. And as a side note, look at In this case, because Jimka is feminine word, we wouldn't say який, we would say yaka, but it's a minor mistake. Look at the different forms the word for woman takes. In Russian, it's женщина, while in Ukrainian, it's жінка. The preposition yes. meaning on is the same, except for slightly different vowel quality, and the words for chair are no, clearly no. related, but take no. on different forms. In the How does he know all of that? It's crazy to me. How does he know all of that? Like, he says this. On is the same, except for slightly different vowel quality. He says on is the same, which is true, except for small vowel qualities. In Russian, it would be na. In Ukrainian, it would be na. For English speakers, you wouldn't hear the difference, probably. It's incredible that he knows this. It just blows my mind. And the words for chair are clearly related, but take on different forms. In the most basic form, the Stool. nominative singular, the Russian word is Stool. And the Ukrainian word is Stilet. Here they are in the locative case, though for Russian, it's often referred to as the prepositional case. Now, let's look at one final sentence and see what we find. These okay. sentences mean, I can't go because I'll be working tomorrow. tomorrow. In Russian, Я не могу пойти, потому что завтра я буду работать. Я не могу пойти, потому что завтра я буду работать. Я не могу пойти, потому что завтра я буду работать. Я не могу пойти, потому что завтра я буду работать. Is there something wrong with this sentence? Я не могу пойти, потому что завтра я буду работать. Maybe with other context it just sounds weird. And in Ukrainian. Я не можу піти, тому що завтра я буду працювати. Word for word, both sentences are. How would I say this? Чувак, я не могу туда. Я не могу завтра пойти, потому что я буду работать. Oh yeah, I wouldn't say that. I would probably say go tomorrow because I'll be working. It's there's no difference. I, negative, can, go, because, tomorrow, I, will be, to work. To work. Notice that the first two yeah. words, meaning I, then the negative, are basically the same. Next. The Why do you say to work, not working? Maybe he'll explain. Words meaning can are cognates, but have grown apart and are now pronounced differently, notably the second consonant. Next, the verbs meaning go are cognates. They are both perfective infinitive forms. Both verbs contain Infinitive, a perfective yes. prefix attached to the imperfective verb. Next, there's a compound conjunction meaning because in both languages, and these parts are cognates, but yes. the Russian compound contains an extra element. In Ukrainian, a different conjunction bo, can bo. also be used. Next, the words for tomorrow are basically the same. After that, we see the subject pronoun again, yeah. but it isn't yeah. necessary and can be dropped because yeah. the subject is clear from the conjugation of Потому the verb. Both Russian... Because I'm I would say I. Because I'm going to work tomorrow. But I, I would change the... I would move I before tomorrow. Because I'm going to work tomorrow. Instead of... Because I'm going to work tomorrow. It just doesn't sound... It just doesn't sound that good to me. And Ukrainian are pro-drop languages. Next, the imperfective future tense is formed in the same way. 
with the verb meaning to be as the auxiliary verb in the future tense, followed by the infinitive of the lexical verb meaning to be. And also, all, all the Russians and Ukrainians, I will be waiting for all your hate comments. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just from my experience and maybe tomorrow I will think a little bit different, but I don't I don't have a script, so it's just what I'm saying. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't say things like they are. Work. But the lexical verbs themselves are different. The Ukrainian word was borrowed from Polish. As I'm yeah. sure you can see, Russian and Ukrainian are very closely related languages yes. that share a lot of similarities, but they also have a lot of differences. We share some a lot. of them minor and some of them major. Lots of different vocabulary, different pronunciation, and different word forms that have arisen over time make the two languages only partially mutually intelligible to people who don't have much exposure to the other language. But since most Ukrainian speakers also speak Russian or have extensive exposure to it, asymmetric intelligibility is the norm. In other words, asymmetric Ukrainian speakers can often understand Russian, while the Russian speaker doesn't understand Ukrainian. Someone recently asked me in the comment section if all of the Eastern European countries can understand each other, and it's not the case. Again, I've never been in the west of Ukraine, but I assume most of the people know Russian. And in Russia, most of the people don't know Ukrainian. By, by far, I'm sure. Especially Russian speakers from outside Ukraine. The question of the day. For speakers of Russian and Ukrainian, how similar do you think the two languages are? To what extent can you understand the other one? Okay, so again, as I said, I'm from Eastern Ukraine. With my friends and my family, I talk Russian, even though I know Ukrainian, in my opinion, perfectly. But I think that Russian and Ukrainian language are very similar. But I'm sure that a lot of people from Western Ukraine would say that these languages are completely different. And for other people, how similar do Russian and Ukrainian seem to you? Yeah, I want to know that too. How similar these languages are to you? Obviously, there are differences that he explained very good in the video. I cut some of them out, so please do check this video in the whole if you're interested in Russian and Ukrainian language. I would love to hear your opinion. And yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this video, go check his channel out. And thank you so much for watching this video. It was a pleasure for me to share a little bit of my culture with you. And yeah, see you tomorrow. Пока-пока. <coughs>